Aloha and welcome to Live at the Legislature, where every week we sit down with members of the House of Representatives to talk about issues, priorities, and legislation moving through the halls of the state capitol. There are two more weeks left in the 2019 legislative session. Last week and this week, Senate members and House members are working to resolve their differences on pieces of legislation before we adjourn on March 2nd. Lots of the big bills we see flashed in headlines across the media are the bills that get the most attention. They are sexy, they are controversial, or they are able to attract hundreds of people and advocates to the state capitol. But there's a lot of legislating going on here, and besides those big bills, there are also bills that are not as sexy, not as controversial, and don't attract as much attention. Two of those bills are up for a final vote today in both the House and the Senate. They are bills that affect the everyday lives of our citizens, and we want to talk about them because we need to. Joining me today is Representative Nadine Nakamura. She represents the northern part of Kauai, and she is one of the introducers of a bill to prevent youth suicide. It is an alarmingly increasing trending problem and we need to take care of it. Good morning. Thank you for joining us. Rick. Thank you, Carolyn. So tell me, why did, why did you introduce this bill? What was it that motivated you to do it? It's uh, very personal for me. There's, uh, you know, we all um, have people in our family. We have people, our children have friends and acquaintances that they have had um, suicide. Um, they know what suicide is about. They know that friends have attempted suicide. Mm -hmm. And so this is a, a bill that uh, helps to address this statewide. Well, you know, the statistics are pretty alarming. Um, I think nationally, it's the second b biggest cause of, of death for 15 to 24 year right, olds. Right, and in Hawaii, for that age group, it's, uh, it's the number one cause of injury-related deaths. And that's why um, it's so important for us to address this head-on. Mm -hmm. uh, we know that for every attempt, uh, every suicide that's carried out, there's 180 um, ER visits, and there's mm. close to 60 hospitalizations. So, you know, it's not just, it, there's a, you know, it's a very pervasive uh, issue. A lot of people don't, do not know that 12% of all middle school children, students, and 10% of all of our high school students uh -huh. have attempted suicide in the state of Hawaii. And, and I understand that on the neighbor islands, it is a particular problem. Yeah. Can you talk a little bit yeah, about that? Yeah, thanks for bringing that up because uh, what we find out is on Hawaii Island, the rate of suicide is almost double that of Honolulu. Uh, that's followed by Kauai and then mm -hmm. Maui. So the neighbor islands, um, it, it, you know, there are fewer things for our youth to do. There's fewer opportunities for mental health assistance mm -hmm. uh, because of lack of uh, physicians. And, and uh, there's fewer you know, evening and uh, nighttime activities, weekend activities for our youth. So th th they all uh, contribute, and I think statewide, just this issue of bullying and cyberbullying is a huge problem that uh, contributes to um, thoughts of, to of suicide. So tell us a briefly a little bit about the bill. What are the particulars in this bill? So what does uh, HB 330 uh, sets aside $150,000 mm -hmm. that will go to the Department of Health that will be used for intervention, it will be used for education, and for uh, prevention of youth suicide in mm -hmm. the state of Hawaii. Is that enough? Is this just a beginning? Where are I we? think it is a beginning. I think it would be great if these funds can be used to leverage outside sources mm -hmm. to do more, uh, the prevent Suicide Hawaii Task Force has come up with a great strategic plan on how to address this issue. So this is an attempt to support that plan to help implement this on all of our islands. Okay. Well, this is the, the stats are just just alarming, and so we, the, we'll see what these two bills uh, 
do for this problem. Sure. I also, you you are, as I said, and maybe I can't remember if I said it or not, but you, you are from God's country, the northern part of Kauai. Yeah. And you, that side of the island is just coming back from a devastating mm -hmm. flood. Um, I believe the highway that's been closed for about a year is about <clears throat> to open. Can you put it into context for those of us who are not lucky enough sure. to live in that area on Kauai? Sure. Right. Tell us about the community. Right. Right. Well, in mid-April of last year, uh, there was 50 inches of rain that fell within a 24-hour period in, mm -hmm. in Wainiha. Um, and that's a, a, a national record. And that caused a lot of damage to homes and cars, businesses closed down. There were 12 rock slides mm -hmm. um, on the north shore of Kauai that isolated a community of about 1,500 people who live out there. Mm -hmm. Uh, so they have, over the past year, had to live their life around a convoy schedule that set times on when you can come into your community and when you can leave the community, working around the construction that's going on right. to stabilize the hillside and then to rebuild the highway. Well, that area of the island is heavily, vi it's heavily visited um, by yes, tourists. Exactly. Right. What happens now? Is this a chance to manage tourism in that area? I'm glad you asked because the Wainiha, um, Limahuli, and Haena communities have, even before the flood, have really had a huge impact with 2,000 visitors coming to the end of the road mm -hmm. to visit the Haena State Park and to uh, begin the, the trail, the Nepali Wilderness Trail. And that causes a lot of tra I mean, exactly. traffic. I, th I think we've got some, in fact, some photos, or we were just yes, showing the right. photo of cars parked. Yes. That's a highway. That's a state highway. And you can see, because of the you know geography, you can't expand that highway. Uh, there's no uh, shoulders right. for cars to park. And, but cars are parking there. So it's been a huge impact to the community. These are, remember, to get there, you know, there's a series of one-lane bridges. Mm -hmm. And those bridges are also being repaired. So there's a, a, a huge impact. And we are using this opportunity to do a reset, to say we're going to minimize the number of people going into the park. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, um, there's also, a, I think there might be a slide that shows the uh, two-mile stretch of highway mm -hmm. where we're creating a no parking, standing, um, stopping zone along the state highway. Right. There's going to be no parking signs erected and we are increasing the fines from $35 to $200. Uh, we have a bill, in fact, that's uh, going to be heard today in conference Agreed. committee, HB 333, that will hopefully um, help us to do that. Well, you know, there's so much more to talk to, and hopefully we can get to that. But unfortunately, we've run out of time. But thank you so much, Rep, for being here with thank us this morning. Much. And good luck to the northern end of uh, Kauai and to thank all you. your residents there. And to all of you, thank you for joining us. We will see you next week at Live at the Ledge. Aloha. Do you know your legislators? Visit capital.hawaii.gov and enter your street name to find detailed information about your representatives and senators. From your district number to the committees and current bills your legislators have introduced, this is an easy way to stay up to date with what is happening in your community. If you're looking for detailed information concerning Hawaii State Senate and House hearings, please visit olelo.org forward slash gov hyphen archives. Videos are arranged by date with the most recent at the top of the list. You can also search the on-demand media library by typing keywords into the search box. Are you looking for an easy way to get involved in the legislative process? Stop by the public access room located in room 401 at the Hawaii State Capitol. The public access room provides citizens of Hawaii's facilities, services, and equipment to enhance their ability to participate in the legislative process. Aloha and welcome to Live at the Legislature, where each week during the legislative session, we give you a chance to hear directly from state senators about what's going on here at the Capitol. As we enter the final two weeks of session, senators are deep in conference figuring out what is going to survive the last, of the last push of the session. At the same time, they're beginning to look back at what maybe they could have done better and look ahead at what's in the future. 
Joining us today is freshman Senator Sharon Moriwaki, who represents the dynamic Kaka'ako, Ala Moana, Waikiki Corridor, as well as Mo'ili'ili and Makali. Aloha, Senator. Aloha. Thank you for being here. Um, this was your first session as a legislator, but you brought some broad experience as a community organizer as, and as a manager. Um, was there any, looking back, is there anything about the session that surprised you? You know, from the other side, it's really different. You, you're advocating for your thing, right? Whether it's kaka'ako and high rises and so forth. Uh, on, on this side, inside, I see how hard it is for uh, my colleagues, myself now, um, because you have so many issues and so many stakeholders and they're different. And um, so, so I think what I've learned is, is compromise. Um, it's looking at listening to a lot of different viewpoints, um, which you don't have to do when you're on the other side. Um, and and how, how hard it is. I mean, I, I, I really see my colleagues as very hard working. It's fast paced. You've got to think fast. So a lot of preparation goes into um, to the work we do. So, yeah. The session doesn't seem as long as it does from the outside, does it? No. <laughs> it's very fast. It's so fast. It's, uh, it's amazing. It's amazing how fast everything moves. And um, I, I commend the chairs of, of the committees. They have a lot. I mean, I read a lot. Every night I go, I, my eyes are hurting. <laughs> I use all the bills, all the testimonies. And uh, the chairs, I give them credit. They read all of that and they they you know be able to put together recommendations they listen to everybody uh, and you know what I tell my my um, peers people who work with me on the outside um, that you've got to submit testimony you've got to make it clear because we do read it and it does make a difference and I don't think many feel that way uh, and so they say well do something but you know <laughs> it takes it takes all of us doing something <laughs> So uh, learning a lot, really learning a lot. I'm enjoying it because I'm seeing a whole new, a new perspective on how, uh, how important it is to be involved. Um, is there anything you wish you knew on day one that took you a while to figure out? Well, I think more prepared. I mean, you know, day one, what did I do? <laughs> uh, because it is kind of a quick is, transition. It is so fast, yeah. yeah. And I think a lot of work needs to be done preparing for the session, bills. Um, I put in bills that I thought were important to my community. Um, and, and you see how it impacts others. So I think a lot of, of groundwork before the session starts is critical. Um, I, I think I would have done that better. But we put in bills, some of them still alive <laughs> so far, but we'll see in the next two weeks. And, and you did have kind of an unusual experience because you introduced a bill that got a lot of attention, the, the, the Waikiki um, the crime. Street the street strike. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, and it got a lot of attention. It, it was um, really huge uh, kind, of, kind of public uh, sentiment around it and before it, it finally got deferred. But what was that experience like as a freshman? Um, let's see. I, I, I don't, well, I don't know. I think, I think I wish it would have passed, but I learned compromise. I, I went to the chair, Senator Rhodes, and I didn't realize the implications of if this went through in Waikiki, it would impact downtown and this area. Where are they going, Sharon? Well, <laughs> to my district. So, you know, it's not always that easy to say, oh, it's a good idea and we really need to do something. Mm -hmm. ACLU came out and they had other, other problems with the bill. But I think what I learned um, was that all bills that come through come from a problem. Mm -hmm. so, it, it, so it allows you to have a hearing. It allows you to have um, the input of many and seeing what, what could work. Mm -hmm. And maybe going back now to the drawing board, um, for example, um, Mufi Hanneman with the Hawaii uh, Lodging and Tourism Association. Well, we'll take that bill. We'll see what we can do to make it maybe across the board. Um, how can we improve that? Because because it is a problem that you've got so many people coming back and getting a slap in the hand mm -hmm. uh, from the courts and, and they still keep on coming back and, and um, assaulting people and you know constituents uh, as well as the visitors um, that we need to do something about it. And, and something we, we, you and I were talking about right before we came on about how uh, the solutions may seem simple 
it, it may seem clear, um, but once That's you right. get into it. That's right. You see, you see how, how it impacts many. And I think that's, that is the job here, um, is listening to everybody and trying to find a compromise that could at least move it a little further in terms of solving problems we think are very important for the community. Mm -hmm. um, what do you think are the biggest challenges ahead for the state and for your district? Oh, I think housing. I mean, it's been there for affordable housing, mm -hmm. you know constant it was it's it's here and we've got to deal with it i think there are a number of bills going through um i had one to to like a rent supplement bill so it helps those at the lower end not become homeless mm -hmm. by by giving them uh rent supplements uh on the other side there's there's uh, senator chang's bill on the aloha Cha aloha uh, aloha homes which will create more homes that are affordable for many more people. Um, that is still alive. I don't know where that will be. And then there, there are the, the rental supplement program. So the state is doing its share on putting funds there for the building. Um, there also needs to be a lot put into infrastructure so that we can build and make it cheaper to build. Mm -hmm. um, that is, I think, the number one number one front and center we've got to do something about full court press because if not you have the homeless and if not we lose we're the only Sunbelt state that's losing popular we lose our, lose our young and talented people so that that affects our economy mm -hmm. so so it really is about housing and that that I think is a major issue um, TVRs um, short-term rentals um, those are also taking housing out of the market. It's all about having a place to live that's secure, mm -hmm. uh, safe, uh, affordable, uh, and helping our community to make, make our, 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 well, have stable communities of people who care. Well, we're glad to have you working on it, you and, and Senator Chang and, and, and all the senators. And uh, congratulations on wrapping up uh, uh, an effective uh, session. And we'll, we'll hope to see you back again next session. Which Thank you, Richard. Ideas. Thank you for joining us today. Thanks to Alela for making this time available. And we'll see you next time live at the legislature. Mm -hmm. Do you know your legislators? Visit Capitol hawaii.gov and enter your street name to find detailed information about your representatives and senators. From your district number to the committees and current bills your legislators have introduced, this is an easy way to stay up to date with what is happening in your community. If you're looking for detailed information concerning Hawaii State Senate and House hearings, please visit olelo.org forward slash gov hyphen archives. Videos are arranged by date, with the most recent at the top of the list. You can also search the on-demand media library by typing keywords into the search box. Are you looking for an easy way to get involved in the legislative process? Stop by the public access room located in room 401 at the Hawaii State Capitol. The public access room provides citizens of Hawaii's facilities, services, and equipment to enhance their ability to participate in the legislative process. Good morning and welcome back to Live at the Legislature, where every week we speak with representatives and senators about all the hot topics here at the state capitol and in their communities. Our guest today, representing uh, 96706 Eva Beach, uh, Senate District 19, Senator Kurt Favela. Good morning. Good morning. Good Happy morning. Easter. Hope you had a yeah, good weekend. A great Easter weekend. Yes, we did. So we're, we're going into sort of the final stretch of session, and there are you know, a few things we wanted to talk about, two of which directly affect your community. Yes. Um, but first, we wanted to sort of clear the record <laughs> on, on a certain thing, so yeah. I'll let you uh, go into that. Yeah, you know, just a lot of nervousness. You, know, you, you try to do the best for your community, and... When you go into chambers, a lot of stuff changes. So uh, September is going to be Suicide uh, um, uh, Awareness Month. And I'm definitely for uh, that being uh, September being Suicide Prevention Month. So if you guys seen that I voted no, um, um, I, I, I'm not voting no. <laughs> okay. okay. Yeah, thank you. Okay, because we got that cleared out of the yes, way. Yes, thank you. Um, so we'll go straight into what's what's affecting your community. Um, one of them is uh, one that was recently passed uh, last week, HCR 82 Senate Draft 1, and that requests a task force to uh, sort of, or on North Road management, and that's been a big issue from my understanding. Yes. So 
you know, kind of what's yeah, the history you know, in your work yeah, on that? Yeah, well, the thing is, from when I was, from living there from a, a, a little kid to now, um, North Road always been a big issue. But more so now that um, the Iroquois Point area um, stopped um, taking, having their uh, residents do bulky. They banned bulky. So there's no bulky pickup for the city. City don't do bulky in there. So it only increased the, the littering on North Road. I'm not saying everybody in Iroquois Point is the only ones throwing the rubbish. There's other residents and cars and abandoned cars. But to have this task force um, uh, go through is going to be great because all of the entities, including the neighborhood board from the city and county, the mayor, um, the golf course, um, and, and state and federal roads, I mean, even Iroquois Point is going to be part of the task force. And to have that um, push through something that our community was long overdue. Um, now that we're going to have somebody to really look into um, the situation and um, uh, have a plan, have a good a, a good plan of attack to keep that road safe. You got to understand, we have our children that goes to school and our family members that go to work. They walk on that road, pitch black, no sidewalks, bushes, rubbish, whatever you say, and they got to go in and out of Iroquois Point. There's no bus. For whatever reason, the city stopped the bus services in Iroquois Point um, for whatever reason, this is substandard road. This is something that we're requesting of the mayor to please come out to our community. We want to have a meeting with him and a sit down. It's not going to be a beat up on the mayor. We just want to have his perspective and see what is the issues that we really need his help on in getting the bus services to Iroquois Point so our family and friends can be safe and not have to walk on that road. And from my understanding, that road is, there's multiple sections that are owned by different entities. Yes. There's a city and then... Was it Iroquois course. Point? Yeah, Iroquois Point and the golf course. And the golf course. Yeah. Okay, and so that task force would bring all of them together yes, to try sir. and just find a way Long to fix overdue. the problem. Yeah, yes, absolutely. Yeah, and thank you. Yeah. and the next one is a similar problem, which uh, <laughs> is a resolution that you introduced, is Senate Resolution 154, uh, which is actually being heard today at 115, yes, Conference Room yes, 225. Yes, you guys' testimonies. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, that requests the extension of Keanui Drive uh, to Renton Road in Eva Beach. So for the folks who aren't from Eva Beach, why don't you tell us a little yeah, bit Yeah, so what that. had happened is uh, the development of uh, uh, Gentry's projects that have been happening in the community. Uh, Keanui Drive is actually goes to Kolowaka. If anybody live in Eva Beach or anybody listen to the radio in the morning, Accident on Kolowaka and Renton Road, I mean, Fort Weaver Road. Accident on Kolowaka and uh, Fort Weaver Road. Well, that's the road that all those cars, right now there's a development that Gentry's building back there. A lot of the residents in Ever Beach don't know, even the ones that live there, was kind of shocking to me. But they have 300 more homes that they're building on top of uh, Keanui Drive. So they request that the city or the, the developer, uh, one of the two, need to come up with an idea on how they're going to connect the Kianui Drive extension. And the reason for that is because that's going to take cars from Kianui Drive out on Renton Road to Fort Weaver Road. So that would allevi alleviate the congestion on Kolowaka. And, and it's really bad right now over there. So I, I just, hopefully we can come up to an uh, unilateral agreement, whatever they had with the city or, or, or the community to have this thing taken care of. Because the CIP monies, um, something has to pay for some kind of infrastructure um, per home. So I don't know how much the city is getting for per home that they sell. Um, we're looking into that right now. But we really want that road done before the project is done. We don't want the project is done and then we're going backwards and try to build a roads when we have 300. Well, you know, if you build 300 homes, you're not going to have 300 cars. You're going to yeah. have double that. Yeah. <clears throat> so 600 cars. Imagine 600 more cars on Kolowaka. So Ever Beach people out there, if you guys really, really um, tired of sitting in traffic in Kolowaka, please make you guys' voices heard. Let the city know, let Gentry know, and let my office know. In fact, put in testimony. Let everybody know that you guys are tired of sitting in traffic in Kolowaka. And when we were talking off camera, you were showing some of the photos of, you know, sort of the trash yeah. pile up. And so yeah. I mean, what, what's been taking the, so long to get the this The reason why fixed? I brought that up um, and I showed you the pictures is because... Um, um, Gentry, um, uh, representatives from Gentry told me that they could not, federally, they couldn't cross to Renton Road because of the train tracks. While I talked to the people of the historical from the Railway, Railroad Association, the tracks historic doesn't go that far. From, from Fort Weaver Road, 50 feet or even maybe a little bit more, than 50 yards, excuse me, 50 yards from Renton Road, um, I mean, and Fort Weaver Road is the boundary. 
they're almost 200 yards in. So there's no possible way that they're, they're going to disturb, it, disturb the historical area. So we're still doing more investigation and looking into it, and we're trying to reason with the developer and the city to have this road on the project or doing the project and getting it done before they sell one home in, in that area because it's going to be crazy if they don't. And so it's the county that owns that section? Yes, the county the owns the road, is. and the county could have put in the stipulations on the unilateral agreement in the contract when they got their permits and said, hey, you're going to bring 300 more cars onto the road? It's going to be too, too congested for Kolowaka. Because you got to understand, if they, if they don't go Kolowaka, then they're going to go Iroquois Point Road, and then they're going to go on to Kuhini. It, it, it's crazy. I mean, in the morning, people out there in Ever Beach, you know, Kolowaka will be a definitely nightmare if those homes are sold before that road is connected. All right, and so for the folks at home, uh, once again, that is SR-154 that's being heard at 115 today on conference room uh, 225. So whether, you know, you're... You're from Eva Beach and sympathize, or you're you know you're tired yes. of being stuck in traffic. Generally, yes. uh, please submit testimony. Uh, Senator Favela, thanks again for joining Appreciate us, it. and thank, thank you, you again to the viewers at home. Uh, we will see you next week.